The objective of this video is to reveal techniques that can reduce cycle time when using automation equipment. The principles outlined can be applied to various types of automation devices manufactured by several companies. There are many ways to reduce cycle time. The scope of this video will only include fundamental items that are commonly overlooked. The focus will be on issues relating to ladles, reciprocators, and extractors, or robots. As with any undertaking, safety should always be in the forefront. Before working on any equipment, make sure the operation is fully understood. Contact a manufacturer when there is uncertainty. Obey all warnings, safety rules, and lockout procedures. Safety always supersedes cycle time. Many diecasters purchase their automation equipment to improve quality and decrease cycle time. As business increases and time becomes short, the setup of the automation equipment begins to take a back seat to other aspects of the process. In time, misuse and improper setup can actually increase the overall cycle time. Automation equipment affects two phases of the cycle of the diecast machine. The amount of time required to ladle metal into the machine, the amount of time the die stays open. Any techniques applied to reduce the time spent during either of these two events will reduce the overall cycle time. The principles outlined in this video should be applied and monitored daily. One second saved is well worth the effort. The following example illustrates this point. Two diecasters are running the same part on identical machines in a world without unplanned downtime. The only difference between them is one second in cycle time. The parts are sold for $8 apiece. They both run each machine for 20 hours a day, allowing an extra four hours for light maintenance and shift changes. The machines run five days a week for 50 weeks each year, allowing two weeks for holiday shutdown. The only difference is diecaster A runs a 28 second cycle and diecaster B runs a 29 second cycle. Here is a breakdown of what each will produce in a year. At the end of an hour, diecaster A will only make four more parts than diecaster B. But at the end of one year, diecaster A will have made 20,000 more parts than diecaster B. At $8 a part, this is $160,000. If we apply this to 10 machines, the total is $1.6 million. Following are several techniques that may help save that one second. An ideal ladle cycle requires the ladle to reach the cold chamber within one second before the die cast machine is ready to receive the metal. It can be detrimental to part quality to have the ladle arrive at the machine any sooner. If the ladle is allowed to wait too long, the metal will begin to cool. As shown in this infrared footage, you can see how fast the dipper cools as the ladle waits for the diecast machine to close. It is unfavorable to cycle time if the diecast machine waits for the ladle. Here are a few questions to ask when evaluating a ladle to reduce cycle time. What can be done before the unit is installed? Keep the furnace close to the diecast machine. The closer the ladle is to the machine, the sooner it will arrive at the cold chamber. Determine the best angle of attack for the ladle. Away from the diecast machine and molten metal, experiment with a water-filled dipper and a cold chamber. See if the metal can be poured out faster by changing the angle of the ladle's path in relation to the cold chamber. Maximize the size of the pour hole. It is easier to pour faster if the hole is bigger. Is the ladle getting to the diecast machine in time? See if any of the timers are set too long. Most ladles have a timer that will match the cycle of the diecast machine with the cycle of the ladle. Reduce or eliminate this delay if the ladle does not arrive at the diecast machine in time. The ladle may also have a timer that keeps the dipper in the metal while filling. Too much time in the metal can increase the cycle time, but be careful, incompletely filling the dipper can cause inconsistent shot size. If the ladle is still not making it to the machine on time, consider starting the ladle sooner. 
If the die open time is shorter than the ladle cycle time, it may be necessary to start the ladle soon after the shot is made. Remember, before making changes to the machine's wiring or interface sequence, contact the machine manufacturer. Can the time spent pouring metal be reduced? The setting of the first dipper position and speed can usually shave the greatest amount of time from the pour without sacrificing neatness. Set the speed that drives the dipper to this position as fast as possible without spilling metal. This position should be set such that the metal just reaches the lip of the dipper. The intermediate positions and speeds are responsible for controlling the rate that the metal is delivered into the cold chamber. The limit to how fast the metal can be poured is determined by the size of the pour hole and the shape of the dipper. Experimentation is the best way to determine what speeds and positions to use. The final dipper position and speed is used to expel the remaining metal from the dipper. Because dipper geometry varies, experimentation is the only way to determine the final angle and speed to use for this setting. What speeds can be optimized? It is not wise to set the speeds to their maximums if the ladle is going to wait for a start signal. Typically, most shops maximize the speed from the holding pot to the diecast machine to prevent a loss in metal temperature. If time permits, the speeds back to the metal should be slow. This will help prevent undue strain on the unit and lessen unplanned downtime. What features can be used to save time? Some units have a pour forward feature that enables the ladle's arm to move forward while the dipper is pouring. With this feature, the extra time spent during the pour to compensate for smaller pour holes can be reduced. This sequence makes it easier to quickly pour the metal into smaller pour holes. This feature also helps prevent buildup around the pour hole. The die open time is the longest event in the overall cycle time of the die cast machine. The ability to effectively use the extracting and reciprocating devices is crucial to the reduction of the cycle time. The common goal for extractors, robots, and reciprocators is essentially the same. Rapidly move into the die space, perform some task, and rapidly get out. Because of the similarity, the same logic applied to extractors can also be applied to reciprocators. What can be done before the units are installed? Consider the optimal die open distance needed to extract the part and run the reciprocator. Less time is spent opening and closing the die if the die open distance is shorter. The reciprocator's primary function is to apply a release agent. Sometimes it is necessary for the reciprocator to provide external cooling to the die as well. This increases the amount of time the reciprocator must spend between the dies. Steps should be taken to minimize the amount of external cooling needed, such as optimizing the internal die cooling system. It is paramount that the utilities supplying the reciprocator are sufficient. An inadequate supply of air, water, or lube will add to the amount of time needed to spray and blow off the die. Is the extractor getting to the die cast machine in time? When the extracting device is required to quench the part and load a trim press, returning to the die cast machine before the next part is ready can be a concern. For example, if the robot holds the part in a quench tank while the part is cooling, it may not make it back to the die cast machine in time. If a cooling station is loaded with the part each cycle, the robot can do other tasks while the part is cooling. When the cooling station is full, the first part that was set aside will be cool enough to load into the trim press. What can be done to reduce the die open time? Before the extractor, robot, or reciprocator can enter the die space, a signal to these units indicating that the die is clear is needed. Instead of waiting for this signal at a home position, some extractors can be programmed to move to a ready position very close to the die or door on the die cast machine. 
This reduces the distance the unit must travel to retrieve the part once the clear signal is received. Many reciprocators have a feature that enables the unit to move close to the die while waiting for the start signal. This feature keeps the manifold away from the parting line during the shot, then moves the arm to a position just above the die where it waits for the part to be extracted. Minimize the movement of the clamp as the part is removed from the ejector die. Flat parts require less clamp travel to clear the ejector pins than deep cavity parts. Sometimes it is necessary for the extracting device to wait for the ejectors to move forward before the part is clamped. In the case of many robots, the ejectors move forward while the part is clamped. In both cases, cycle time will be added while the ejectors are moving forward. To reduce cycle time, move the ejectors forward before the extraction device is present. When using a robot with a reciprocator, investigate the possibility of starting the reciprocator before the part is sensed. The reciprocator could be started as soon as the robot is clear of the reciprocator's path. The part can be sensed later. For this to work, there cannot be any interference between an unextracted part and the path of the reciprocator. Since the part will be removed the majority of the time, why waste valuable cycle time waiting for the part to be sensed? For those who take cycle time very seriously, consider the amount of time required for the gripper to travel from the full open to the full closed position. On simple hydraulic cylinders, stroke limiters can be placed inside the cylinder to limit the travel of the clamp. This action must include close inspection by setup personnel now that the tolerance around the pickup point is tighter. If a die has four cavities that require one second of spray for each cavity, a total of four seconds can be spent spraying the die. With a custom manifold built especially for that die, the whole die could be sprayed in one second. The custom manifold can be very helpful when running a long-term job. Because of the tremendous savings in cycle time, some die casters even use them on lower volume jobs. They simply include the custom manifold with the cost of the tooling. The manifold is considered part of the tooling and is stored with the die. Properly spray the die. Although a flood of die lube can quickly cool the surface of the die, an atomized spray has shown to provide a deeper, longer lasting cooling effect. Atomization of the die lube is an area that should be addressed for each die. The trend to flood the die may allow quicker cycle times, but should be compared to the extra expense of wasted die lube and parts rejected due to the quality problems that may be caused by improper spraying techniques. What speeds can be optimized? Once the part is released, there is no reason to hurry back to the diecast machine. While the diecast machine is making the next part, the extractor speed should be kept slow. The unit should just make it back to its ready position a few seconds before the die opens. Once the die is open, the speed in and out of the die should be as fast as possible. By minimizing the speed of the machinery when it isn't essential, wear and tear is also minimized. The speed that the reciprocator moves to reach the first spray position and the speed it moves after completing the final spray position should be as fast as possible. The speeds that the unit travels during the spray sequence is determined by the spray requirements of the die. When programming these spray positions, be careful not to make unnecessary moves that could add to cycle times. Move to the ready position using a slow speed. There is no reason to move to this position quickly if the reciprocator is only going to wait for the part to be extracted. What features may be helpful in reducing cycle time? Some units enable the reciprocator's arm to remain at the ready position between cycles. Because the manifold is above the parting line, it will require maintenance faster, especially if the die tends to spit. When considering this feature, determine if the unit can move to this ready position as the part is being removed from the die. In most cases, the answer will be yes. Possibly, the only time this will not be true is when the diecast machine is using a drop-through part removal system. Some extractors have a feature that will extend the gripper before the clamp reaches the part. 
Be sure there are no obstructions that could cause damage before attempting this action. There are many techniques to reduce cycle time. When doing so, be careful not to be overzealous. The emphasis should be on eliminating wasted time before the speed of the equipment is increased. The faster any machine runs, the faster it will wear. It is critical to remember that unplanned downtime can ruin whatever steps have been taken to be more productive. Sometimes, if cycle times are reduced too far, the number of bad parts can increase, wiping out any increase in part production. The optimal point is just before the number of bad parts rises above the random level expected from the process. Following the preventative maintenance recommendations supplied by the manufacturer, proper training of personnel, and a good stock of spare parts can alleviate downtime due to unforeseen problems. Running fast is important, but running smart is more appropriate. A careful analysis of the automation equipment, the overall machine cycle, and steps to include the previously mentioned techniques into the die casting process is one way to make this happen.